Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this image. Now, as you've probably realized, this image isn't taken outside uh, at the end of a nice sunny day. It's actually taken in this studio. And I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. So let's start with this light at the back here. This is a Profoto B2. Uh, and it's uh, basically just a, a very small circular um, flash, studio flash. Uh, now it's quite important that if you're going to attempt something like this, you have something which has a circular aperture on it. Uh, this is going to form the sun uh, in our finished image. But in order to make it look right, uh, we need to diffuse it ever, ever so slightly. So the way to do that is to use uh, one of these, or something similar to this. Uh, this is uh, a quarter stop silk, uh, and it's actually made of a uh, material uh, instead of a uh, plastic film. And that is actually quite important. The grain in the material here uh, will actually diffuse the image uh, of, the, uh, of the flash down the back there, um, so that uh, it actually ends up uh, being a bit of a cross shape. You'll see what I mean as we go on. Next we come to the camera. I'm using a, a 85mm uh, 1.2 lens on the camera uh, today for this video. Uh, and the camera is tethered into Capture One software running on the PC so that you can all see uh, what I'm capturing uh, at the same time as me. Uh, it's quite important to use a, a lens which has a fairly wide maximum aperture uh, for this sort of thing, uh, as you'll see as we carry on. OK, so to start with then, the first thing I'll do is just take a test frame just to see what contamination we're getting uh, from the house lights. Obviously no flash on this. We're just looking for uh, anything in the background, really. And there's nothing on that. Uh, but there again, this is at f8, and I don't think we're going to be using it at f8. So I'll put it down to uh, its maximum of 1.2, and we'll take another test. Now here you can see that there is quite a lot of uh, contamination. You can just about make out where the flash is through the, uh, through the scrim. So if I wind this up to about 2... And that's dropped down to possibly an acceptable level. So from that little experiment, we can see that at F2, we're getting uh, an acceptable amount of uh, contamination from the house lights. So I'll put a flash trigger on the camera. Like so, and we'll do a test with the flash on just to uh, get an idea of exposure. OK, so you can see from that is way over. What I think I will do to start with is I'll take the energy down on the flash to its lowest level. Like so. And we'll just give that another test. OK. So in this image, you can see the effect that I was trying to get from having uh, the scrim at the back there made of cloth. Uh, it gives you this uh, diffusion in this star shape, which is what I want. OK. Now, in order to uh, make that uh, a better colour, we want to uh, try and simulate a sunrise, after all. Uh, I'm going to use a gel in front of the flash. I'll just pop that on there. And we'll just do another test. There we go. Lovely. So from this image, you can see that our background is starting to get there. Um, the focus point is yet to be determined, but obviously you can uh, vary how much the uh, artificial sun is out of focus by moving it backwards and forwards. Uh, you can also vary how much of the effect of having this cross shape 
um, by moving the whole screen backwards and forwards. Right, so time for a subject. So this is basically um, just some uh, flowers which I found outside, uh, which I've attached to this stand. Uh, so we'll just place that uh, about here somewhere. Like so. And what I'm going to do is um, try and focus at the front here so that the rest of it goes slightly out. Um, obviously there's no light on this yet, but it will give an idea uh, of uh, how close we are. So let's just give that uh, a bit of a test. Okay. So just looking at this image, um, I can see that uh, the focus point isn't quite in the right place and really uh, it's amazing it's as good as it is uh, considering that I've just plonked the, uh, the flowers in front. So if I just have a little look around the image, I can just get an idea of which bits are in focus. That for instance looks like it's in focus which will tell me which way to turn the lens to get what I want in focus. So let's just have a go at focusing that up. OK. Still not quite. Uh, you can see on this one, uh, this is the one that I'm actually trying to get into focus, and it's just not there yet. So a little trick you can use to aid the uh, focusing would be just to um, pop into live view. But before I do that, I will just increase the ISO um, to something uh, a little more appropriate for doing that sort of thing with. Uh, about a thousand should work. I don't want to alter the aperture or the shutter speed uh, for the time being. So with this set, I'll just now flip over to live view. Uh, where we can focus up the image uh, using the controls in the software here. So as I alter this, you should be able to see that the focus point is shifting. Uh, and if I move it back the other way, you can see it move back again. There we go. So this is the part that I'm actually trying to get into focus. OK, so with that set, we'll come out of live view, take the ISO back to its normal level, and just take another test. There we go. And you should be able to see now uh, that this uh, is nice and sharp. So the next thing that I'd like to do uh, is just uh, light this uh, a bit more uh, so that we get uh, a believable uh, lighting on the, uh, on the flowers. Now obviously in a sunset scenario most of the light is going to be coming from behind here. Uh, but actually a lot of it will be reflected off the clouds above. So somewhere up here would be the best place to, uh, to place our illumination for this part. Uh, so I will just rig a flash um, with a, a softbox about in this position. OK, so with this roughly in the right position, um, I'm just going to check through the viewfinder uh, to see if it's actually in the image, uh, which it isn't at the present. But I want to try and get it as close as I can without it being in the image. Like this. That's just starting to get in the image. So I'll just take it up a little bit just to get it out. There we go. The other thing to uh, bear in mind is that, uh, like I said before, the sun would normally be coming from behind the subject and uh, bouncing off the clouds uh, to give uh, an overhead light. So this is why this is mostly behind uh, our main subject here. Now this flash head is actually plugged into a power pack which we have down here on the floor. Uh, so I'll just turn that on. This is set to an arbitrary uh, power level of around 5. Uh, we'll probably change that uh, as we go on. OK, so with that in place, um, we can give it a bit of a test. Ah oh, yes, far too much. 
Uh, now, obviously, with l using lenses uh, almost wide open, you don't need a lot of energy to do this sort of thing at all. Uh, so what I will do is take the energy down on that, uh, on that pack. There we go. I've taken four stops off to start with. And we're starting to get there. OK, so you can see that this is fairly well illuminated. It's possibly a little over. So what I might do is just take that down by another half a stop. And we'll just try that again. OK, that's looking good. Yes, I think that's a bit better. This is what we had before. This is what we've got now. So, as I said before, what we've actually done is put the uh, flash at the back there on its minimum energy level. So I can't actually turn it down anymore. But I would actually like it a little darker. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a neutral density filter uh, to the front of the lens. I don't want to alter the aperture because I want the, uh, the depth of field to be very narrow. OK, so with that set, uh, we'll take another picture and see how we're going. Oh yeah, that's much better. So that has taken us from that which we had before to this what we have now. In fact, I've got enough leeway, I think, to be able to increase the uh, energy level on the overhead. Uh, so I'll just take this back up again by that half stop uh, just to see what difference that makes. There we are, that's pretty good. Uh, I like the uh, fringing effect that you get on the very fine hairs on the uh, uh, outside of the stems on the plant. Uh, so that's brought that out quite well. That's what we had before, that's what we've got now. So it's just that little bit more. So far, so good. Now, the whole reason I think that uh, the image works in the first place is because it shows depth. So in order to do that, you need to put something in the front here, uh, which will be out of focus because we've uh, already established we have a very narrow depth of field. Uh, so yet again, I've got some more bits of plant. So I'm just going to pop that in here somewhere. And possibly just move that apart a bit like that. I have to be quite careful with these because they are a bit spiky. There we go. So I'll just check that through the viewfinder. OK. Give that a test. There. Now that's starting to uh, give me the sort of image uh, that I want. But obviously you don't have to stop there. Um, we could put some more interest uh, at the back here. So this time I have some um, grasses. Uh, so I'm just going to hold these in position, probably around here somewhere, uh, and just see um, what effect that has on the image. Yeah, that's pretty good. So again, you can see this is the before, and this is with the grasses in. Uh, I think they're a bit concentrated around this corner, um, so I might need to... Uh, just think about that a little and probably bring them a bit closer in. So I think they probably want to be more here than here. So just holding that in position. There, that's given a really good effect. OK, yeah, so I think that's uh, quite a nice one. Uh, now, obviously, it would be uh, a good idea to uh, take a few of these. Uh, this is giving you your variation. Uh, and as you move this backwards and forwards, uh, you will uh, obviously change its focus point, and that will change the emphasis that ends up in the picture. So I'll take two or three at different uh, distances. So this is quite close in. And this is quite a long way away. And you can see from those the difference that you get.
OK, so as far as actually uh, capturing the images go, that's about it. Uh, there isn't a great deal to it, really. Um, you do need uh, very low power flash for this um, because you're using your lens at its maximum aperture and because you have one of your flashes pointing directly at the, uh, the camera lens. Uh, but it is quite important to use one which has a, uh, a round aperture to give you that round sunlight disk. OK, so with those captured, we'll pop into Photoshop and just do the final post-processing. OK, so here we are. Uh, the image is opened up in Photoshop. This is the one that I chose. Uh, so as I usually do, the first thing I'm going to do is just make a duplicate layer. OK, anything that I do to this one, um, I can always go back to the original, uh, which is just sat underneath it. Um, so one of the uh, effects that I might want to do here is just add a little bit of blur uh, to the image, just to make it a bit more dreamy. Uh, so if I just go to Filter uh, and come down to Blur and Gaussian Blur, uh, it's probably a good idea not to go too mad with this. Um, it will depend on your image and the resolution that you've uh, shot it at just to what level you use. But something like that may well work. Let's give that a try. Click on OK. So obviously this one is now out of focus and this one is uh, sharp. So if I then change the blending modes between those two uh, to something more like um, Lighten uh, or Screen. Screen sometimes works. I think Lighten works slightly better on this one. Uh, you can see that the effect is to uh, just make it that little bit dreamy without actually taking off the edge of the, uh, the focus. Uh, and just for uh, good measure, then another thing that you can do is just add a, uh, a layer mask here uh, and then just mask out the bits that you actually want to be pin sharp. Um, so, for instance, just painting with black uh, oops, that's possibly a little big. Uh, let's take the thing down to a more reasonable size. There we go. And we'll just click on here and just sharpen up this bit right in the very centre. So this bit's sharp and the rest is uh, quite nicely out of focus. You can see the effect that's having. Right. Uh, so besides that, I don't think there's a great deal else that needs doing to this. I think it's quite a pleasant image. Um, so if we just go for a crop, um, I'll pick a 16x9. 16 by 9, 16 by 9 fits the video very well. That's why I use it all the time. Um, and I don't want to go too mad with this, uh, just to uh, crop it to a reasonable amount. Something like that, I think. There we go. Let's click on OK. And there we have our final image. Well, I think that looks quite nice. Uh, and considering it's uh, shot in a studio, um, I think that is quite believable to be uh, a sunset uh, outside. OK, so if you like seeing these sort of things, uh, do click on the other images as they appear, uh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.